Good morning from Austin, Texas at the Combined Up Thousand Symposium. We're pleased to be here with Dr. Manjul Shah. Good morning. Thanks Thank for being with us today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'd like to speak this morning about a really interesting glaucoma topic, and that is uh, subconjunctival type glaucoma procedures. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like over the last five, ten years, there's been such an explosion in the various types of procedures that are available yeah. to us. So I'm wondering if you can give us a brief overview of what these procedures are and where they fit in in your armamentarium in treating glaucoma. Sure. So, you know, the fact is subconj procedures have been around for decades, if not centuries. You know, we've been, we've been filtering aqueous humor to the subconjunctival space for about as long as we've been doing glaucoma surgery. Mm -hmm. And decade after decade, year after year, we've been getting better at it, more refined at it, more nuanced at it, uh, really trying to take into account safety because we know that we got some efficacy uh, working for us. So with that said, certainly the environment now is really different than it was just five or ten years ago. Uh, but as a glaucoma specialist, we cannot forget the centrality of trabeculectomies and tube shunts in our practice. I mean, it, the, the fact is we still need them, we still use them. Um, I think their role is getting a little bit uh, more niche and a little bit narrowed because we have some of these other uh, devices and techniques that are kind of filling the void. And I think that's to the credit of, uh, of innovators and um, you know, advances in the field. Trabs and tubes aren't going away anytime soon. I think we still have them, and we still have to understand how to optimize them. Well, let's dive a little deeper on that, and, and maybe you can point out a couple of specific scenarios where you would find these types of procedures to be preferable to other types of procedures that are available. Sure, yeah. So, so with trabs uh, specifically, you know, as of right now, the evidence really suggests that if we need a if we really are concerned about a patient uh, progressing in the low teens pressures, and we really are convinced that this is an IOP-mediated process, and we're really going for that really low, that 8, 9, 10 kind of pressure result, the nature of a lot of the micro-stent technologies to the subconjunctival space, the way the physics of them works, we really just can't get there. Mm -hmm. And so trabeculectomy is our way of achieving that single-digit pressure. So, yeah. and, and, and uh, as far as tube shunts are concerned, uh, these are sort of our workhorse glaucoma procedures. Mm -hmm. You know, in our, in our more refractory cases, our, our sort of more scarred cases, often easily combined with uh, surgical uh, um, approaches with the retina team, with the cornea mm -hmm. team, et cetera. Uh, they're really a workhorse. They're really resilient. Uh, they stand up to some of the ins and outs and challenges of ocular surface and subconjunctival mm -hmm. scarring. Um, but in sort of a more pristine case and a more ideal case and quite frankly a more normal case, I think the uh, subconjunctival stenting options really do shine. Yeah, and, and I wanted to go a little bit deeper also onto the patient experience and patient expectations here because I think a lot of patients that present with glaucoma may have it in their family and they may have some experiences with um, their parents or grandparents with these types of procedures like trabeculectomy right. that uh, were, were, were frankly hard experiences. Right. And, and they may be coming in with um, some apprehension. So yeah. how can you allay people's fears uh, who, who really do need these kind of procedures? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact is we know that glaucoma surgery of the past did carry a, a significant morbidity associated with it. Uh, and that's just talking about visual issues and adverse issues. We're not really even beginning the dialogue on patient experience and their quality of life issues thereafter. And so I think, number one, it is really important to validate those concerns and recognize that their concerns are real. Uh, glaucoma surgery is a big deal and can be life-altering. Uh, but we have ways to be more nuanced and tailored. And I think recognizing the wealth of options that we have enables us to choose the right right. Uh, intervention for the right patient. Mm -hmm. It may end up being that a trabeculectomy or a tube shunt is indeed the right choice for the patient, despite the fact that they may have some underlying reservations. But going through the conversation and the dialogue is really important for patients. Um, how do you foresee future glaucoma specialists or people who are training in, in residency and fellowship now? Do you think that it's important for us to emphasize teaching these procedures in addition to some of the more uh, new or less invasive procedures that are out there? 
I do. I mean, I think I think the correlate is is uh, with the history of cataract surgery, and I think we have really clear uh, guidance and benchmarks there. Cataract surgery has evolved dramatically over the last three, four decades. We went from extra caps and intra caps to phaco emulsification. Even phaco has gotten more refined over the last 15, 20 years. That being said, there is still a role, and increasingly a newly recognized role for extra capsular uh, cataract extraction, sort of manual, manual techniques mm -hmm. for cataract surgery in certain scenarios. So similarly, I see trabeculectomy as the uh, extra cap of the glaucoma surgical toolkit. Mm -hmm. You got to know what it is. You got to know how to do it. You got to know how to manage it, and you got to know when you got to pull that tool out of your uh, out of your kit. But you probably don't need to use it as much as we needed to in in the past because we have uh, novel technologies mm -hmm. that really improve safety that we can leverage for for patients. Understood. Well, this has Manjo been a terrific discussion for us this morning about the importance of subconjunctival procedures and how they play a role in our current treatment plan. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thanks for having me.